Last week we had a record store day. Famous artists brought out special uh, releases on vinyl only. My daughter blew all her pocket money on 80s vinyl uh, and there were queues outside record shops everywhere reaching down the street. And uh, joining me now is turntable and vinyl aficionado Ed Selly. Ed, were you in one of those record store queues? Did you buy any vinyl last week? I need to confess that I wasn't. Um, there are two reasons for this. One I would say is positive and uh, one I would say is less positive. The positive reason why I wasn't is that 2023 has been blinding for new music. So I have been buying albums right, left and centre. Um, and at that point, you know, when I have a, a trainer fixation and other things to pay for, I, I simply wasn't, wasn't uh, fiscally equipped for Record Store Day. And I wasn't that motivated to go. This is the less positive aspect to it. Um, Record Store Day has a very noble purpose. It is, it's to get people into and supporting independent uh, music retailers. Uh, over time, the nature of a lot of the releases for Record Store Day have, for me, and your mileage may vary on this, has become somewhat... Uh, something of a, of a of a novelty act uh i mean one of the most sought after releases for record store day this time around was a repress of the macho man randy savage album uh professional i say professional wrestler the wwe you know leotardi sort of wrestler um if you want that that's brilliant it's not my not my thing um and uh you know you've got to things have to do what they, they they need to do to stay viable but this time around uh in light of the amount of records that i've already bought this year and the amount of records i still want to buy this year i gave it a swerve but um no i mean I, it, there do look to be some interesting things it's just perhaps a slight shame that a number of those interesting things are now available for you to buy on ebay after the person that queued for them has popped them on there for uh, six or seven times the price that they paid for them which is disenchanting well, as ever, I always learn stuff from going on this show. I hadn't realised that uh, wrestling on vinyl or wrestlers on vinyl were available. So, so thank you. For to be that. fair, it was news to me too. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a very smart pink pressing with Macho Man Randy Savage on the, on the cover. If it's your thing, I mean, you go for it. You know, don't um, let me stand any way. I think on this occasion, I might pass. But uh, I, I, I've got some... Some old stuff. Hang it. This is the kind of thing my daughter's been uh, been buying, uh, sort of oh, 80s nice. pop on vinyl. And, and it's always nice to get the next generation using your turntable, is it not? But if you oh, yes. haven't a turntable currently, fear not, because Ed is about to tell us about one. What have you got, Ed? This is the Cambridge Audio Alva TT2. Um, it turned up for uh review and it's it, it's an, a very interesting piece of kit i mean obviously it is a record player it does all the things that you would expect a record player to do but um it does it in a very cambridge audio way um now a little bit of background cambridge audio has been around in two distinct forms it, it was originally created in the 1960s um and it between about 68 and late 80s, it uh, produced a number of pieces of kit. I think I'm right in saying the first British made CD player. If it wasn't the first British CD made CD player, it was it was very, very early on in that this gigantic three box thing imaginatively called the CD one. Unfortunately, the company went into receivership um, and it was purchased by essentially an offshoot of, uh, of the Richer Sounds operation. Now, originally, the aspirations for Cambridge Audio were pretty limited. It was there to provide a small set of products for Richer Sounds that they didn't have to compete with other retailers on price for. Um, but like all good things, it, it, it grew. Um, they got some very talented engineers in. They've had a number of people over the years who have... Uh, despite having very different approaches in themselves, they've been quite consistent at taking quite high technology concepts and delivering them at sensible price points in relatively user-friendly ways. And as you might imagine, a record player, it's hard to make that a high technology concept. It's, it's a record player. But they have um, very successfully done the things that they feel matter in, in the Alva TT2. So... What you get is a smartly finished turntable uh, that 
is direct drive rather than belt drive, which is relatively unusual. It's not unheard of, but um, there are fewer direct drive turntables than there are belt drive ones, which means that the motor acts directly on the platter itself, uh, which in theory allows for extremely good pitch stability and, and making sure that nothing sort of has that slight sort of unpleasant wobble as uh, sustained notes are playing. Um, and then it allows for immediate and simple speed selection between 33 and 45. Um, what they've then done is combined that with a little bit of interesting technology and then an enormous helping of convenience. So within the um, chassis of the Alva TT2 is a phono stage. So the signal from a record player is feeble and needs to be boosted before it makes it to your amplifier. Cambridge Audio has gone and fitted one internally. And then because they're Cambridge Audio, and they fancy doing something a little bit more than that, you can also output the signal from this phono stage over uh, a decent quality Bluetooth output to uh, a Bluetooth speaker. Now, that isn't much use in the same room. I mean, I've done it, I've tested it works, and it's, it sounds surprisingly good. But where it actually comes into its own, the range on this Bluetooth transmitter is pretty good. So if you were listening to music and actually you wandered off into the kitchen to get some stuff prepped you can if you've pre uh, prepped and paired your bluetooth speaker in the kitchen it will quite happily then receive the signal from the alva and it, it sounds very good i mean the limitations are that you're still going to have to wander back and change the side or indeed the record when you run out of music but it, it's one of those things where you may or may not make great use of it but it has been done quite nicely and quite 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 impressively the other thing that they've done is as standard, your Alva TT2 comes with a cartridge, uh, the actual needle and, uh, and, and generator arrangement that sits on the end of the arm. Cambridge Audio's designed, or I suppose to be honest, they've worked with another company um, to produce uh, something called the Alva MC, imaginatively enough. Now the clue there is that this isn't uh, like most affordable cartridges. It's a moving coil design, which, um, instead of moving a magnet inside a, a, a sort of a, a, an array generates a signal by moving a, a coil against a, a, against the same arrangement which it produces a, a lower output by making the coil as efficient as possible this cartridge is able to work into a normal moving magnet phono stage or indeed obviously the one that's inside the Cambridge Audio but this cartridge is really good um, I mean, really, really good. You can you can buy them. Cambridge Audio will grudgingly sell you them without the turntable. Um, and they are sensational for the asking price. They are beautifully made, sound exquisite, uh, very, very forgiving in terms of what you can attach it to and how, how it will perform. And it's this cartridge um, above almost anything else on the Alva that really elevates it from, ah, oh, that's a nice convenient turntable to, oh, that's a nice convenient turntable that sounds really rather good. So um, that's what um, the basic package of uh, that, that Cambridge Audio is offering you. And obviously the clue to what where we, they've been on this is that this is the TTV2. There was an original Alva TT. Um, that is um, now defunct, and it's very, very similar. That had a different tone arm, which was developed in cooperation with Riga. Um, Riga's very busy making Riga things these days, so Cambridge Audio has gone and sourced their own tone arm. Uh, it's actually very nice. It, it works perfectly well. I didn't, I don't find there's any appreciable difference really in performance having tested the two. Um, the other thing that they've done is they've paid attention to how you might choose to use your Alva TT. Um, the original version, you had no choice but to use the phono stage that was built into the turntable. It couldn't be switched off or bypassed. They've corrected that in the V2. So if you have a decent phono stage in your amplifier, uh, or you simply want to make use of an external phono stage, you now have the ability to do that in this new model. And it's a little thing, but it just gives you that little bit more stretch, a little bit more flexibility in how you choose to use it. In in some ways, it makes it more Cambridge Audio, which, you know, I think is something that any company is seeking to do. And it just takes a good turntable, which the original version was, and it makes it better. Um, it's one of those things where I'm a huge fan of vinyl. I make no secret of the fact I, you know, my, my social media ab ab abounds with them, but I'm not blind to the failings of it. 
um, and I'm not blind to just how much of a faff it can be. Cambridge Audio has done a very, very good job as, of reducing that faff to almost nothing. And I, it, it makes for a, a very, very impressive product, which also looks and feels like a Cambridge Audio product, rather than, you know, we make all of these things for Cambridge Audio on, and here's a turntable in the corner. It, it feels homogenous, and it feels part of their range. So, uh, yeah, I was extremely impressed with it. Now, now you do seem very, very pleased with it. Um, are you yeah. also slightly pleased with yourself because I believe you do ha you did have a smidgen of something to do with the TT2 did you not I, I don't want to oversell this um right first of all uh, it's not an, uh, a secret I did actually work for Cambridge Radio I worked for Cambridge Radio for a, a, a fairly long time between 2003 and 2008 I was gainfully employed by them um I remember encountering Mr Lucas when he was already a, a firm member of the press and I was wearing branded polo shirts and you know he was normally very nice to me so that was good um, since then uh, on occasions I will work with Cambridge Audio and other manufacturers I do not regard myself as much of an engineer um, what I am reasonably proficient at is telling you uh, I can find things which I know are going to annoy members of the public because I, in, in other work that I do, communicate with the general public on a fairly regular basis. All I did with the uh, Alva was uh, take a finished sample and do all of the things that engineers don't do to their products that customers do and make sure that uh, it stood up to and did not fall over and did not suffer any issues um, when when that was happening. Uh, I also, many years previously, when the original Alva was being developed, uh, a, a completely unbranded um, Alva MC cartridge was just sent to me with, with the open-ended question, is this any good? <laughs> And um, yeah, uh, I, I spent a week and a half determining that, yeah, it was in fact really, really good. Um, so yes, it, it's one of those things I do not, I, 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 I point out where you can do better at making products user friendly. I, and then obviously I'll tell you if I think it sounds all right. I don't make bold claims of you should be using an unobtainium bearing or things like that because that, that, that's, that's not my forte. You see, in my head now, Ed, you are now the equivalent for, for um, Cambridge that the uh, IKEA mobile factor test is for its <laughs> furniture, where they simulate a child jumping up and down on a sofa for a very long it's, time and see if they can wreck it. So it, in my head, that's that the kind of, of testing us... you are. Yeah, so it's something that a number of reviewers do. I mean, there's different names for them, but essentially what we do is, if you like, it's a dress rehearsal. We'll tell you what we'd say before it appears in the magazine or on Sound Advice or wherever we've written it without recourse. And you have recourse to why we've reached that decision. And, you you know, if there's something patently wrong with it, it gives you a last chance, Salon, to try and try and fix it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that review, Ed. And if you would like to read the whole review, I will pop that in a link down below this video.